therapy, what it does is encourages um, and promotes wound healing from the bottom of a deeper wound um, through the application of continuous or intermittent pressure. Um, yeah, this device um, has been one of the, the leading um, almost ways of technology for wounds and, and healing of wounds, especially for deep wounds. I'd say overall this piece of equipment impacts a patient's life because they have less wait times or less hospital length of stays. Um, they actually, instead of being you know, confined maybe to their bed, being that this thing is so portable, they're allowed to have a bit more um, you know, autonomy. They can get up into a wheelchair, this can strap on the back, and they're able to walk outside, um, take, take some of the sunshine in. Um, and then they're also able to go home with the unit if they need to. So um, I think that, that probably benefits them. Okay. I also think that it reduces the chance of surgical intervention if we can provide this therapy, as well as um, having to go to an urban center for the assessment of therapy keeps them in our hospital. I'd say that access to this particular piece of equipment um, as a healthcare worker uh, allows us to be up to date with current practice, utilizing gold standards of practice, and again, it helps us to get our patients home as soon as possible. Prior to having this piece of equipment, um, this kind of therapy would have to be initiated in an urban site. We would then get transports of patients and have to rent this uh, equipment by the day at our site and then have to send it back when they're completed their wound care therapy. Logistically, it was a nightmare. Uh, you'd have to phone the unit in Calgary, make sure that our rented unit showed up on to the floor and then that they would have to, on the, on the urban sides, they would have to ensure that they disconnected it, put on the new machine that was rented, sent back to us. And then even when we sent people home to home care, we would have to take this off and home care would have to rent their own system because the cost of renting came out of different units' budgets. So just having this has eased a lot of things. Well, I'd say it's similar to the, right. the Legion. I mean, we've seen this unit benefit from donations. We've got TVs about to arrive for every single bed on this unit, which is a huge, huge thing um, for patients' overall well-being. Um, you know, we often talk about people needing to remain connected, and I can't imagine what that feels like to be isolated in a room with no connectivity, not even to the outside world but through the news or, you know, hockey or whatever it is that they enjoy. That's one of the ways that we've seen benefit, hey? And it keeps us um, on standards with the gold standards for wound care, especially this piece of equipment, so that they don't have to transfer Okay, so demonstrating uh, the capabilities of our newest uh, vac machine for Unit 300. Um, if we had a terrible wound such as we have here, this is an example of a, a wound that we would see quite a bit. This is a coccyx wound, so right at the backside of, of somebody. Um, it's often related to just not being able to get out of bed and just break down and shearing of skin. So uh, if we ever got to this bad of a point, we would probably it start using the vac so what Andrea is doing here is she's creating uh, almost a railroad system. Um, so we're eventually, this is going to protect any additional moisture that might occur around the wound. Wounds are a funny creature. They don't want to be too dry and they don't want to be too moist. If there's too much moisture, you'll actually get further breakdown of this, what they call peri wound or around the wound skin. So this is a, a way of ensuring that we are going to keep the area around the skin nice and dry. This is a semi-permeable, um, sticky if you will, so it does breathe. It allows air and moisture to go in and out of this membrane. <clears throat> and it protects this healthy skin as well, like you said. Yeah.
All right, this is the piece of foam that comes with it. And what this is gonna do is allow that vacuum to go through these porous tissues and allow the wound to actually heal from the bottom up. So we would cut it to fit it to the wound bed. Um, and it's a bulk cut. We like to actually leave it a bit large. Um, and that the reason for that is when it does get compressed and vacuumed down, um, just like any vacuum, it's going to sort of mold to the, the cavity that we're filling. So once we're happy with our sponge, um, we use uh, just the same stuff like we put around the skin, uh, just a larger version of it to really get a good seal between the skin, those strips, and the actual um, sponge itself. This is always the tricky part because we're typically needing to wear gloves and this stuff loves to stick to our finger. <laughs> So then we make a small incision through the clear membrane um, and that is going to be where uh, you'll see Andrea is going to apply the actual vacuum suction tubing. You can get very creative with this machine. You can create all kinds of shapes. Sometimes if you can imagine this, having to sit on this or lay on this would be very uncomfortable. So sometimes what we'll do is we'll actually, there's little tracks. They have the same uh, spongy membrane, but we can put that spongy membrane over and run it along to the side of say a person's leg and actually put the suction portion here so that they're not sitting on all that bulk. So there is that technology as well. Okay, so at this point, um, what we would do next is we would hook up our, this is our um, drainage container. So it helps us because it's got little marks on it. It helps us to watch and monitor how much um, drainage is coming from the wound. Um, too much drainage is a bad thing and it alerts us that maybe something further needs to be managed. Um, so we'll keep an eye at that. Um, and as I said earlier, wounds are a funny thing. They don't want to be too dry and they don't want to be too moist. So any excess moisture will get sucked up into this canister. And it just slides in and clicks in to the side here. And then it's just like that as one complete unit. From this point, um, and this is usually based on our doctors, uh, they will determine um, how much suction pressure they want and if they want it to be continuous pressure or if they want it to be off and on or intermi intermittent pressure. So from there, um, from there, we can change all of our different uh, therapies. So we can, you know, again, we can go from intermittent to continuous using the therapy button. It'll also give us a breakdown of the history on how long this has been in use for, what the typical um, vacuum setting was, was set at, and then there's some other settings that we can work with. But now that we're all set, um, all I'll do is I'll press start to initiate the therapy. And if you focus in on the actual sponge there, And so the cavity is completely filled. There is suction that is promoting blood flow up into the wound and into the vacuum area, which will actually cause the healing to occur. <laughs>